out of the sea. Though the waters roar and fall, and the mountains quake with their surging, I tell you the truth. A time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of God and those who hear may live. Jesus said unto Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will die, will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Praise be to God the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For light afflictions, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I want to say a blessed good morning to each and every one of us, and I want to from the onset to extend to the family of our daily departed Sylvia Walcott, our sincere condolences and trust that you have been experiencing the comfort that God said he will give and that you will continue to put your trust in him because he is able to help us. Let us pray. Our Father and God, we thank you for life. Lord, we are reminded that in the midst of life, there is death. But Lord, I believe that we can feel confident and satisfy God that our sister live beyond the, the appointed time that you have given to man. You said it is three score and ten. That is 70 years. She lived 21 years beyond that. And we thank you for a long life. You said you would bless those who trust you with long life. You satisfy them with long life. We pray in a special way for those who sense this loss most keenly. We can never become acquainted with death. No matter how old a person is or, or how sick they might have been, when that person goes, there's a void. But we are thankful, God, that you specialize in filling voids. And I pray today, God, even as we say farewell, as we, God, reminisce on this life, that those of us who remain will examine our own lives, recognizing God, that our time will come. So Father, have your way. Overrule in everything that is said and done. May you have full control. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now we are going to, um, and the funeral director has provided pre-recorded music. And we will sing along with that, that music um, first hymn, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and clear. When the sick of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be 
Be seated as we have our first reading from the Old Testament, Psalm 46, a very familiar psalm. And this is going to be read, just, this is going to be read by Janiah, that's how I pronounce it? Yeah. Janiah Brown, very brave young lady. Let me just wait. I just want to make sure things are sanitized, right? Pardon me? Psalm 46, verses 1 to 5. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This Therefore will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raised, the kingdom will move. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to seed unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the carrier in the fire. Be still, I know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heaven. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Amen. Let us put our hands together for us. I think that is excellent. I don't ever recall seeing someone so young reading at a 
service like this. We want to thank God for Janaya. We're going to do a second hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. This is a, word, a song that brings comfort and tells us where we can go when we need help. Let us stand again um, as we sing this song. have our second reading, and this is going to be read by Harriet Walcott, and I believe this may be one of the daughters. She's going to come. Granddaughters, okay, sorry. And uh, she will read from the Bible a very special passage, Revelation chapter 21, reading verses 1 through six. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Here ends the reading. Amen. And those are some glorious promises that God has made to, to us. And it is up to us to believe it or doubt it. Now we're going to have the eulogy, and we know eulogy speaks about. When we have a eulogy, we speak good about the person. That is what eulogy means. You know, eulogizing. So we're going to invite Sandra Mon. That's Mon, right? Now he's getting mixed up with these names. You know, but yeah. and she's a niece. So we had a granddaughter, now we have a niece that is going to share with us some things about Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here today by showing your love and support for our family during this very difficult time. It is with a sad and heavy heart that I stand before you this morning to honor the memory of my beloved aunt, Sylvia Walcott. Sylvia Walcott, who affectionately encouraged everyone to call her Syl or Sylvie, was the sole daughter born to the late Janitha Walcott and Leslie Boucher on the 17th of February, 1930. Raised up in the modest community of Bath Village along the south coast of the island, Sylvie had an intense love for family and the simple things in life. She lived most of her years in the community of First Avenue, Maxville, where she raised most of her children. As a single parent of eight, she was well acquainted with the hardships of life and the strains of poverty. But she persisted to provide for her children and grandkids, ensuring that they were always fed, clothed, and had comfortable lives. As Sylvie's roots grew in Maxville Hill, she recognized that there was a void in her life. And as such, she made the decision to find meaning to her purpose by seeking God. As a consequence, she sought to commit her life to God and was accepted as a member of the Maxwell Wesleyan Holiness Church, where she later began to serve on the choir. Sylvie delighted herself in spending time in the kitchen. And when she cooked, it always had to be a large portion in a large pot just in case someone stopped by. Old time Bayesian chicken soup was her specialty. Sylvie so would load the pot with lots of chicken and some big, big dumplings. And be guaranteed that she would add some barley seeds to strengthen your body. Her grandchildren avidly found of her bakes and her delicious okra and chicken cook up rice. Not to mention the tradition that she passed on to many of her grandchildren to soak biscuits in their cup of tea and eat to their heart's delight. She was a woman who believed that cleanliness was next to godliness. And as such, the neighbors knew her for her love of cleaning both inside and out of her home. In so much, one of her grandchildren indicated that one of the neighbor's children was recently reminiscing. And she stated that service floor used to be so clean you could eat food off of it. It never took for Christmas time to come around for Sylvie to be up and down cleaning. All year round, she took pride in washing and hanging the clothes out every day. When she get to cleaning up outside, she would pull up every nut grass and white hair bush out of the ground and sweep the earth clean before coconut branch broom. Though the wooden house she resided in was old, she kept inside pristine condition as if she was in expectation of the arrival of the queen. Sylvie was a very loving person who would give her last to those in need. She would open her home, her cupboards, and her pot to those who were without, as she firmly believed in the principle of giving. Even in instances where she knew that some people were just taking advantage, she never held back love. She never held back kindness. She never held back 
forgiveness. Even when people ostracized her for some bad choices she made and treated her as an outcast. She was a matriarch of this family, a strong woman who never backed down in the face of adversity. I know that. She was standing for her family, and when you were wrong, she would tell you you are wrong. And she would go a mile to defend you when you were right. She was a no-nonsense person, and many times her grandchildren will learn this the hard way. Then she will connect the spoon to the backside if they weren't behaving right. Her home was always a safe haven for her children and grandchildren, especially when they encountered difficulties along the road of life. She took particular interest in building relationships with her grands and great grands. And whenever she had the opportunity to visit and spend time with the family in St. Lawrence, she would always return home with many exciting stories, often stating how the time with them blessed her heart. Her favorite TV soap was Days of Our Lives, and everyone in the house came to understand that when the clock struck six, you were not to ever disturb her. She was also a big fan of Oprah Winfrey Show. And it would always make us laugh whenever she referred to talk show hosts as okra. <laughs> Instead of okra, despite numerous times one would correct her. Her favorite ledger activity was to rise up early in the morning to get in Seabark down on Maxwell Beach. Each time she ventured to the beach, you can guarantee that she will return with a large bottle of seawater a paint skillet made with sand and either some almonds or sea grapes to divide among her grandchildren who lived at home with her. As the years went by, she never settled to be categorized as or referred to as old. Still continued to take fine care of herself. You would often see her around the house wearing a t-shirt or sleeveless blouse matching her shorts with her neck powdered down and a washcloth over her shoulder. Sylvie took extreme delight with her stereo set. And every opportunity that she got, she would play music and sing along at the top of her lungs. Similarly, she loved to dance, and Lexi's bar in Oystein's became her favorite oldie goldie spot on Friday nights. However, she soon came to learn that her slip to the pleasures of this life would not satisfy. While attending a church service at People's Cathedral on November 9, 2005, she took the bold step to rededicate her life to Jesus Christ. Her daughter Rosie, who cared for her up to her last days, often spoke of the love that her mother came to have for the Lord. She indicated that Sylvie would sing and worship and call on the name of the Lord up ten times a day. Her favorite daily exclamation was, I too love my Jesus. I too love my Lord. In February 2011, she lost her leg due to an amputation. But that did not break her spirit. She kept pressing on, using her walker and wheelchair on the strength left her arms. Knowing that she was aging and could not get her wrong as she liked, she spent many happy days praising God. And living life through the experiences of her grands and great grands that visited, spent time with her and blessed her heart. As we reminisce on Sylvie's memory, we can say that without a doubt, her life was indeed a legacy. A legacy that we, as the future generations, must carry on with strength, dignity, respect, and most importantly, love. She has left a marvelous record of eight children, 37 grandchildren, 16 great-grandchildren, and three great-great-great-grandchildren. As we continue on this journey called life, let us continue to lean on the comforting arms of God, knowing that we as relatives and friends can get through this difficult time 
by laying hold of all of the fond memories we have of her. We are grateful to God for the time she spent on earth with us and dare not question what the Heavenly Father allows. Even on her dying bed, she called upon the name of the Lord and peacefully accepted that she was going to be with her Savior. She batted 91 strong, and we believe that she has gone home to be with the Lord. Rest in peace, Sylvie. To be absent from this body is to be present with God. You will forever live on in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Vaughn, or Mom, sorry. I want to just challenge our thoughts this morning from one of the passages that was chosen um, for the readings, um, Revelation chapter 21, and... Uh, it has already been read, so I would not reread it. And the, the, the book of Revelation is a, a book of disclosure. There are a lot of things that are written in Revelation that had it not been written, we would have no idea about these things. And the, the background behind the book of Revelation, the writer is John. He was one of Jesus' disciples. He was, because of his faith in Jesus and propagation of the gospel, he was put on an island called the Isle of Patmos. And that island was surrounded by water. And... The thing about it, history tells us that they tried to kill John. They put John in a pot of oil, hot oil. That couldn't kill him. And then they put him on an island by himself. You could understand being, a, being on an island by yourself and all you're hearing is the gushing of water. That would send you mad. But in that, that situation, John had a vision from God. God revealed some things to him, things that were about to happen, things that were going to, were going to happen in the future, the type of situations that we will have to face. And in this 21st chapter, he is telling us about a, a new heaven and a new earth. Now, I don't know about you, but... The earth is becoming more and more vile. I remember when I was a boy, you know, things were, things were not as bad as, as it is today. Is that true? We could have walked around. We could have left our homes open. You know, we could go anywhere and feel safe. But today things are so bad. You know, we are desiring for change, isn't that true? We want some peace. We want some joy. You know, but I can't promise you that. Because it seems as though man's heart is getting more and more vile. And to top it off, we have now a pandemic called one COVID-19. That seems to want to just kill out people. Oh, and now we got to wear masks. You know, when I was a boy, you can go, you know, you wear a mask and go in a bank, you, you, you know, and now you have to wear one or you can't get in. And that just shows you how life changes, you know, life is about change. But let us get back to the subject because we just have a short time and I just want to share a couple thoughts with us. Now, John said that he saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the old heaven and earth passed away. 
In other words, all that we are seeing here now, all the violence and all of that, one day will come to an end. God is going to make sure of that. But God is preparing a special place for those persons who would put their trust in him. You know, we heard that our sister, she did like to um, go down in Austin and Boogie. And then she came to a point in her life where she said, this is not profitable. And in 2005, she made a rededication to God because she recognized that, look, this thing can carry me no way good. You know, and, and it is good that we can come to a state in our lives where we recognize, look, that a lot of while living and the partying and a lot of um, running after women and money and them things. You know, those are just temporal things. And, and that satisfaction is just temporary because we got to do it over and over and sometimes worse to get, to get the type of pleasure that we would like. But here it is that the, 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 the writer is saying, John is saying, look, you see all of this can pass away and God is going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. And he said some things that I want, just want to remind us of. He said there's going to be no more sea. So get your sea baths now. No more sea. Because all of those former things are going to pass away. Things like death. He said death is, we, we not, we'll die no longer. He said crying and those things are going to be over. He's preparing a place of joy you know, for each of us. But the thing of it, about it is that God has given man the ability and the responsibility to choose between what is right and what is wrong. God says I, there are two roads. Whether you believe it or not, there are two roads. Jesus says there's a broad road that leads to destruction, and it seems that everybody seems to want to go on that road. But then he said there's a narrow road that leads to eternal life, and few, few there be that choose that road. And, and if you, you see what is happening, they want to get now today the scriptures out the school. Some group want to get God out, the, out of Barbados. They want to get all those things. I tell you, friends, if God leave Barbados at all, and I'm going to use a Jamaican vernacular, dog, eat me supper. Because all of us need God. Whether you believe it or not, we need God. He is the creator. And he knows everything about us. And he created us to worship him. There's something within us that causes us to gravitate towards something that we want to give our highest devotion. That is why persons will worship a tree. Persons worship a cow. Persons worship rocks. Because there's that in it thing in us that causes us to worth, want to worship. But God revealed himself as the true and living God. Yeah. Therefore, he said that you can choose. Solomon said something. He said, look, and if you know anything about Solomon, you can read Ecclesiastes, you'll find out some things about him. He said he was the wisest man, the richest man. Solomon said, look, everything my heart desire, I went after. Talk about women. You think you, you got women? Huh? Solomon had 700 wives and 300 outside women. My father. A thousand women he did dealing with one time. Huh? He kept parties. Huh? Everything he said, my heart desired. But he said, you know something? All of that was vanity and vexation of spirit because I had no satisfaction. And then in verse, in chapter 12, you can check it out, verses 13 and 14, he said, listen, this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments because this is the whole duty of man. In other words, this is why God created us. He said, for we shall give account to God of everything that we do, whether it is good, or evil, and then he add the secret things. You think you get away? Huh? The secret things are known to God. So sometimes we think somebody got away with murder or they got away with rape. No, 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 no. Someday, 
we got to stand before this God and give an account. Our sister made a calling and election, sure. And then he said, look, there's no more crying. There's no more death. You know, he said, those former things have passed away. He said, I can, I can make all things new. Everything is new. But then, you know, we didn't read verse 8. But verse 8, I want to close with that. Because verse 8 is very instructive. And I just want to read verse 8, and then we can go and, and finish our task. Verse 8 says, uh, in fact, verse 7 says, He that overcome shall inherit all things. Overcome this world, overcome sin, shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son or daughter, because that generic there, son, daughter, he shall be my child, and let us use that term. But verse 8 says, but the fearful and unbelieving, you don't believe? The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, you know what is abominable? We live in a time now when people say, look, I ain't got no sex. Or today is a man and tomorrow is a woman. That's who I want to be. Well, you go along. Huh? They say the abominable and the murderers. And when I say murderers, this just, not, this just don't mean you kill somebody, you know. But that person you hate, that is murder. Huh? She, I can't take she. He, I can't. You better change your mind. Huh? It says, and the whoremongers. And the sorcerers, those people that tell you bring a white fowl and all type of nonsense. Huh? The idolaters, those people who worship other gods. And all, <laughs> is it some liars? You think you lie small? All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And I want to to close by saying that the, that was not made for any of us. Jesus said that the, that the hell was made for the devil and his angels. But you know what? We will choose to go there. Some people say, it's God too loving. You think God can send somebody to hell? No. You will send yourself. He will just tell you that is for you. He point you where hell call you may want to go or the person may want to go in heaven. He said, no, 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 no. You chose that place. So I want to encourage us today. It doesn't matter how long or how short you live. We can all make our calling and election sure. We can all make sure that when, if, if it comes that we have to go in something like this, we know that we gone clear. Yeah. We, you, you know we can cry and all of that. And I often say, I don't know if it is right, but I often say when someone dies, and experience paradise with God. No matter how we cry, you think they can come back? Nobody ain't want to come back here. Oh, they say you cry, you will soon stop. Oh, but we got to understand that each of us have to make that decision. No one can make it for us. And God is not going to point a gun to your head. God has already given you the understanding. And he said, look, choose. Broad, narrow, life, death. Choice is yours. But whatever choice you make in this life, no preacher, no pastor, I don't care how he pray over you, can change your position when you get here. The way you die is the way that you would resurrect. And then that determines where you would go. So my friends, I trust that this morning, in all our sorrow and grief, that we would really examine our lives and understand the, the mortality, huh? understand the fleetingness of life. There are many persons who began. I remember at the beginning of the year, we had about, I think, about eight persons who died from COVID. And we were saying that that is a lot. But now we are heading toward 250. Huh? And, and the thing about it, 22 or 22-year-old youngster, 32 people in the 50s, and it speaks to us, too, that we are not taking good care of these temples. We are not caring ourselves because if you are strong, you can fight that off. But we have done so much injustice to our bodies 
that now the bodies is saying, look, can't take no more. But may the Lord help us. May God give us strength and give us wisdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as I pray for the family, and then we'll sing our final, our final hymn in the church. Then we go down to the, the, the gravesite. And we pray God for his strength. Father, we thank you. That you have given to us. Thank you for the strength you have given to this family. Thank you for the life, God, as we reflect on her legacy. Lord, we pray that we too will live in such a way that Good could be spoken of us, Lord, if we should come to this state. We pray, Father, that you would, would challenge us. You would cause us, God, to make the right decision. Lord, the decision to serve you, the decision, God, to allow you to become our Lord and our Savior. We commit this family to you, Father. We pray you continue to envelop them with your strength, envelop them, Lord, with your peace and comfort. Lord, even as we should go on the grave site, God, it, it seems so final, but I'm praying for your, your everlasting arms, God, will be under them, enfolding, surrounding, embracing, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for truth, Lord. We thank you for truth, and truth will always prevail above lies and deception. Help us never to be deceived, Father. But help us to believe the truth. And you said that when we believe the truth, the truth will set us free. So we bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. And may your peace, God, that passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done is doing and will continue to do. Thank you.
We are about to commence the interment. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God in His wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, dust, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty work in whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself.
Are we going to sing our first? Well, we're going to listen, rather. We can sing along, but this is where we have the pre-recorded music. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Another song we're going to sing when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven.
Stanzas 3 is very instructive. Let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repair. Our third hymn, Near My God to Thee. And every day, every moment, every second, we get near to him. Near my God to Thee. Thank you. 
We're going to sing our final hymn. It is well with my soul.
And if at the end of all lives we can say it is well, that is good. Amen. Amen. And not just by recitation, but by experience. Oh, praise the Lord. Just want to read this little poem as we close. It says at the end here, Miss me, but let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we want shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. Now, on behalf of the family, we will want to extend to all of you our sincere thanks and appreciation for all that you would have said and done. We want to encourage us to continue to keep the family in prayer. It is a process that, that they are going through, and they would sti need, still need your encouragement and your prayers, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, said it was 37, I think, grand ch grandchildren and a number of great-grands and great-great-grands. Wow. Y'all could comfort each other, not true? Yeah, man. All right, let us just bow for closing prayer. I'm going to ask my wife. This is my wife. So if you have any doubts, <laughs> this is my wife here. And she's also ordained, and she's going to close in a word of prayer. Let us stand, let us stand as we pray our final prayer. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for today. Yes. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your peace and joy. We thank you for the assurance of your daughter that her children and grand and great grand can have this blessed assurance that it has been well with her soul and it is well with some. For those whose soul is not well and they are searching, I pray that their searching will come to a hand in the name of Jesus. I'm thanking you, God, that they know you and they will call upon you. Strengthen the family in the inner man that, God, whatever they need at this time for days and weeks and months and years to come, that you will provide it. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Bless the family again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, O Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great and safe day in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Yeah, I know people.